All right, we're going on the brakes today. Got the rear wheel cylinder off. I got two new cylinders for this side and the other side. I also got a front right caliper coming. I already put the left caliper on, but I need a new brake line for the left side. This is the old brake line. I tried blowing through it and it's clogged. And as you can see, broke the fitting off because it was rusted. And the threads are rounded off, which is always lovely. And so it got me a new rubber hose and I got me a new hard line for both sides. Quantity of two. Since I have the parts for the rear brakes, I'm gonna do the rear brakes first. It's the new wheel cylinder. Match it up to the old one. Looks pretty damn close. I'll leave a link in the description for all these. These also come with the slide pins and it's two 10 millimeter bolts located on the back side here. Not the most convenient to get to. So just be sure you line up the notch with the shoe and get it in, weasel it in. You might have to use a pry bar to get these shoes on. This thing almost needs new shoes too but the bolts go on the bottom so it goes in like this you got the zerk fitting on the top we'll bleed the system later so we am gonna get that put on then we'll move on to the other side all right this side is complete i took that stupid heat shield off the back see there it is right there all rusted and gone now i'm working on this side these pads are in pretty damn good shape Front pads are like that too. So I'm good on brake pads for now. Look, I got both bolts to crack loose because this ten fits on there pretty loosely. So that was kind of weird. I thought maybe it was like a 3 8 or something, but it's not. All right, got that bolt out. So how I did this on the last one is I just took this, pried it open, put it, try and get it over that notch. And you're gonna wanna work this loose a little bit. There you go. Do the other side. Yep, beautiful, just like that. And you can probably just go ahead and snake it out like so. There you go. Mission accomplished. Like they say, installation is a reversal of the removal. So I'm gonna get this put on. I'll be back with you guys later. Well, I stand corrected. The brake pad fell off. Thought these were in good shape. But they're not. Well, back on eBay I go. Got the wheel cylinder installed at least. So that's good. Uh, next thing you do is to bleed the system. Uh, I'm gonna bleed the right side first because it's supposed to start with whatever corners first away from the master cylinder. And I'm not doing the front today because I don't have the new brake lines yet. So I'm just gonna do the back, uh, get those ready. And then when the shoe's coming, I'll put those on. So I'm gonna put this rotor on so it doesn't pop out. Then we'll go ahead and bleed it. All right, guys. Brake lines finally came in. Caliper, passenger side came in as well. We're using the old pads. They still got plenty of meat on them. That's what I say about the back, but we'll see. <laughs> so these are the hard lines. Goes to the caliper right there. As you can see, they have to be bent. So luckily, I got a tool for that. So one of each for this side, then we'll mirror the same thing on the other side. All right, when you're done, you should end up with something like this. Turned out pretty good. I would say it was easy, but kind of wasn't. This tool makes it a lot easier, that's for sure. Goes up to 180 degrees. It's all you need really, but you're probably still gonna have to finesse some of it by hand. 
but just be gentle with it. But everything's all tightened up over here. The brake line's in. Um, there's no washer fitting on that. But as you can see, there's a washer fitting on the original one. But, oh well. Seems sturdy for now. I just hope it holds brake fluid. So, all right, this side's done. All right, time to finish up the driver's side. So you got your rubber hose, rubber brake line, 3.2 millimeter DOT. Both sides are the exact same size in your hard line. For those of you that are curious, it's a 316 brake line. So we'll get this one bent up, get it put on. All right, got the pads installed on the rear. Looks pretty good. It's a pretty simple task. It didn't require a lot of tools. It's mainly a bunch of pry bars and screwdrivers. Luckily, I was able to take these springs off by hand. Not too much tension, just takes a little bit of skill. You got this spring at the top, attached to these two holes. You got this other spring at the bottom. It keeps inside the wheel cylinder. From that hole over, uh-oh, the wrong spot. It's supposed to be here, whoops. I'll fix that. And then you got the emergency brake check right there. And that might have to be adjusted as well. So, yeah, this side's coming along. About to do the other side. And uh, I'll show you guys that here in a minute. All right, this side is officially complete. Fix that spring, it's got some good tension. The e brake arm is pretty much tight for the most part. And you got that spline adjuster down there. You just take a screwdriver, stick it in there, and you can move it. You move it, I think, counterclockwise, and it opens the shoes up. That's if you have to adjust your emergency brake over time. And then way to test it, if you have it right, just see if you can still spin the rotor. If you hear it drag, but it's not too much resistance so we got right on the sweet spot so that's good so we can go ahead and button this side up and move on to the other side all right took the shoes off all i did was just take a screwdriver probably against the spindle up against the shoe took the springs off the retainer pins first and then i probably one side out and probably the other side out this side is a little more rusty so it was a little harder to get off, but it wasn't too difficult. So, uh, yep. What a shame. Brand new pad. Anyway, take these springs off, repurpose them. Uh, if you have to, go ahead and take your photos. Now's the time to do that. Uh, so you don't forget. But uh, let's go ahead and get the new shoes put on. Brand spanking new, baby. All the extra holes go at the bottom. That's where the emergency brake adjuster uh, wishbone looking piece sits. I'm sorry. So this little, this is, goes to the emergency brake arm. And so this goes in like so. And there's no right or left to these on these cars. They're both exactly the same, all four of them. So you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Then on this side, if you were to put the other shoe on, this little groove slides right in there like so. They line the notch up with the bottom of that brake pad and just sits kind of like that. So, I'll go ahead and knock that out real quick. I'm hoping this will spin free just like the other one. The other side was seized. Luckily, I was able to get it to break free. I thought I was going to take it back apart. But hopefully, that won't be the case with this. Is it moving? No. All right. I'll get it figured out here. All right. This side's all complete. Everything's tightened up. E-brake is set. Springs are in place. The wheel cylinder's lined up. I like it. All right. That wraps it up. All right, so to bleed the brakes, I'm gonna pump the pedal a bunch of times. So it starts building up pressure. And see that feels pretty promising. And usually this is a two-person job. 
but if you don't have a buddy with you, just pick yourself up one of these handy dandy brake pedal depressors. Make sure it's got plenty of tension. All right. Look at that. Brakes are already working. Love it. Yeah, this thing works pretty damn good too. All right, so these are on the bottom. So you wanna crack that bleeder open. And since I replaced pretty much everything, it's gonna be a lot of air in the lines. So I'm probably gonna be doing this over and over again a couple times. Take that little rubber condom off. Don't need him right now. And I think it's a, ooh, it's not a 10. This car's metric, but might be standard on these. It's got some play. What is that, an eight? And a six. This might work, actually. Oh, did you hear that? Okay, I see brake fluid oozing out. There we go. Looks a little foggy. Hoping I can clear that out. Sweet. All right. I'll just keep doing that until, until more comes out. It's supposed to be more pressurized than that. So I'm gonna keep pumping away at it. One thing I forgot to mention, when you're bleeding the full system, you always wanna start with the wheel furthest away from the master cylinder. So on most vehicles, in this case, it is right rear, left rear, right front, left front. That's if the units are distributed that way. Now some, some vehicles, you, know, you got front to back, which is what this one is, where you got a side to side, where you got a diagonal. Um, but luckily, this is the old school version, so we can just go in the correct order. Let's see if I can do that again. Since this is the first one, might be a lot of air in the line. a lot of air. That's fucking gross. All right. We're gonna be here a while. All right, fellas. So I'm not getting pressure at the front calipers. I pumped and pumped and pumped. No go. So I started a little, doing a little bit of uh, digging around. So here you got the proportioning valve. There's also another proportioning valve thing. I just took it off. It looks almost like a proportioning valve. I'm not sure if it is one, but um, the back brakes, they bled just fine. The front brakes, they're not bleeding at all. So I know this, this is the rear brake reservoir. This is the rear brake line. Goes down and around, goes up through here. So I know that one works. And uh, I even took it off. And I press the pedal, and I can see fluid come up through here. And I'm pretty sure there's fluid come through this line. This is the front brake line. But as you can see, it's wet on that side, but it's not wet on that side. Come over here to this guy. As you can see, it's wet on that side, but there's nothing on this side. So I'm assuming this is our problem right here. But don't take my word for it. I should probably get a new one of those too. Um, I'm gonna try to take this last brake line off and then pump the pedal, see if a uh, brake fluid comes squirting out. I'm feeling pretty confident that the proportioning valve is still okay. But I definitely need a new one of these. I wonder if there's, I wonder if I could bypass this, but obviously the factory put it there for a reason. But yeah, anyway. So, okay, so that works. Yep. I see fluid coming out of both of them. So, shit, that sucks. Well, guess gotta order one of these. I was feeling pretty confident too, but you don't know until you try, I guess, right? So I'll order one of these and put those on. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed to the dots and gods that that will be it for the brakes. So stay tuned, fellas.
did a little bit more investigating and turns out the wiring harness here does not go to this. This goes to something else. The starter relay is actually back behind here. It'll screw down. These two little screws right here. It's uh, two little Phillips screws. And uh, I decided to go ahead and take this off. Usually that's the first thing you should check anyways, fuses and relays. So I took that off, I bypassed it. And what I'm looking for are the two black and orange stripe wires right here. So these two pins, follow those pins upward. You got uh, the yellow wire, I believe that's the input. And then you got the yellow and black wire, which is the output to the starter. So you follow that up here is these two little terminals right here. So I. I just got a jumper wire going through it, acting as the relay just to complete the circuit. If you come in here, listen. Cranks right up. Compression sounds a little low. That worries me. But at least I got the starter situation figured out. So I need to get me one of these guys. Hopefully it won't be too much, but with these Dawson's, who knows? So, yeah, that was pretty much it this whole time. Um, keep in mind, I'm learning more about this car as I go. So, uh, yeah, we're getting somewhere. So, sweet. But, all right. So, got that figured out. And once I get one of these, I'll go ahead and put everything back together. Until then. All right, I'm on piston number five. Test the other ones already. Let's see what this one sounds like. Right at fifty. Beautiful. Got a boat anchor.